I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. The red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they can be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Have you followed absolutely anything about uh, the quote-unquote big game? I've, I've not. I've, I've not okay. followed. I Wait, 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 wait. We're not allowed to say what it actually is called. We're not. We're not allowed to say what it's actually called. The sports ball. Okay. So yeah, regarding yeah. the big game, the big um, game, I haven't been following the big game. I only know who's playing because I'm in three different squares. So I am gambling on the big game. <laughs> and I only learned who is playing when I received my sheets back. So my question is, who are you gambling? Who, who's your gamble? Okay, so so the way squares work is it, it's not a side, it's a big grid, and you basically yeah. pay to have your name on a grid, and if at the first quarter, second, third, and okay, fourth okay. quarter, any of the scores end in a number that lines up with your square on the grid, you win uh, a few hundred dollars. Okay, okay, so what's your, what what is your grid, like, give me one of your grid choices. Uh, I think, well, it's also random, sorry, so it's not like a, a standard, oh. like, it's, oh, so it's like just the lottery. Origin. You're just playing lottery. It's, it's literally just the lottery. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, that doesn't sound sketchy at all or anything. It's I won once, and then I've always played, but I'm still not down for my first win. So, <laughs> so the it, it works out right. So I won a few hundred dollars the first one. You're paying five, ten, twenty bucks to pick a square. So as long mm-hmm. as I don't pay more than my first win in the future squares, uh, it's all green, baby. I was I was gonna make a joke about uh, being more interested in the puppy bowl, but like, let's be real. I'm not gonna watch the puppy bowl either. I'm not gonna so watch like, the puppy bowl. This is the first time in a while where, when I saw who was playing for the Super Bowl, I was like, "This might actually be cool." It's T Pain. Oh, the like the 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 show, the show. Not yeah. Not who's playing, as in the the athletes who are participating. It's not Kansas City or the or, or the Eagles. I could I don't I couldn't name a single active. I can name one active football man, but I have time. I'll watch half. I'll watch uh, half. I want to see T Pain. I follow huh. him on Twitch. T Pain's literally the funny thing is T Pain, and and he he said this actually during his Twitch streams. He's a streamer. Mm-hmm. Like his his income what? comes. He, his income like he makes more money streaming on Twitch than he does from music. What does he stream though? Is he singing? Is he working on no, no, music? No, no. So or he, is he's he just got playing one of those, games? Like really expensive, like racing chairs where like you turn the wheel. He plays racing games in like a fancy racing chair. Oh shit! And that's, that's kind of dope. Yeah, and and like he he just talks shit and and, and plays racing games and like huh. he's like yeah, yeah like he's like yeah, this is what I do and, and like he does music still he has it for fun but like his primary source of income is is Twitch streaming or at least it was. When I first started following him a, a year ago or so, living the dream, a dream yeah. at least. <laughs> yeah, and he still works on me. He'll play like songs he's working on and shit during the stream. He'll be he'll be racing and he'll start playing some of his own music that he's working on. It's 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 uh, it's just fun. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. No, I uh, I don't know where I, where I wasn't gonna say anything. I was gonna say something, but then I completely forgot it because you know. Fair. We're not making a podcast. We're we're trying to entertain people by talking or anything. It's, it's you know it's it's just all up here. It's we haven't done this a hundred and twenty eight times or anything. Uh, no, it, well, it, no, it, we it, haven't. Brandon, to be fair, we haven't. We've done it a hundred and twenty seven times. One hundred and twenty seven point whatever four minutes is. Yeah, yeah, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, whatever that is. I'm not going to math. The math sucks. Um, uh, well, we also don't know what the final. We don't know what the final runtime of this episode is. It's probably going to be close to something around an hour because that's usually it's, what it is. Yeah. So I I write all mine to be roughly the same length. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I try uh, to. I try to, Brandon. <laughs> but then, but then I find 
then I find a rabbit hole, and then like that's my that's two days gone just working on the podcast. Was it? It wasn't the. It was the one before. I think it got a text from you, and you're like, "I'm gonna have one that's like around like the length that mine usually are." And then when you st- we started recording, I think I was like, 23 pages or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, that usually is what happens. That's what happens to me. I I think that I've got a short one. And then and then I just like happened to uncover something. Oh, speaking of which, I posted about this in the Discord. Um uh-huh. So basically Young Earth Creationism comes up a lot on the Discord recently, right? Yeah. Um not a surprise given some of the episodes that we've covered on this podcast. Uh yeah. but but I did but. find, um, I found the Vacation Bible School, uh, oh, like, educational program that. Yeah. that is more or less responsible for me being, like, a complete and total fucking skeptic now. Yeah. Um, and Jesus Christ, no, no, no joke intended there, uh, it was, it was bad, like, when I say oof. bad, it was Big like, oof. it was especially bad. They fundamentally don't understand the concept of evolution. Um, for reference, this is this 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 vacation Bible school thing is Truassic Park. Um, yeah, I kind of like that name though. It's bad though. It's terrible because yeah, they don't know. I like bad so things. Yeah, you do. That's true. I mean, you you're friends with me, so like. There we go. Um, <laughs> so the uh, my my like, I don't know if it's my favorite thing, but it's definitely a thing that makes me feel a way. Is uh-huh. their explanation for evolution? Um, which was they have a picture of a poorly drawn cat. Oh, right? I remember that. So so it's a sequence of five images. It starts with a picture of a very, very poorly drawn cat, right? Then it says, like, okay, and then it has a baby, and that baby looks a little different. It has a few different features, it's, right? Yeah. And then that baby has another baby that looks kind of like a dog. And then that baby has a baby that looks a little more like a dog. And then that baby has a dog. And they're like... This is what some people call evolution. It's, 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 I forget. The, I'm stealing this comment from someone on Discord. I forget who, who posted it, so I apologize. But it, it looked, it's Animorphs. It was Animorphs. Oh, oh, no. I think I'm the one who made the, the Animorphs joke. It is 150% anifer, Animorphs. Like, there's, <sighs> there's no. There's no question. I think I have it in actually cursed. There's no question about it. The, the the people who drew that just fundamentally... Okay, so there's one of two things. One, they either A, fundamentally don't understand evolution. Uh-huh. Or, or B, they deliberately don't understand evolution. And, and like, let me, let me read what their, their paragraph is. Okay. Well, that's what some people call... And, and this is in quotes, I swear to God evolution the problem is this kind of stuff never happens except it to- well yeah no the exact example that they gave yes that has never happened because that's not how fucking evolution works um animal babies can be different sizes or different colors or different in small other small ways but all animals have babies that are the same kind of animals and these are all in, all in caps uh, dogs always have baby dogs. Cats always have baby cats. Elephants always have baby elephants. That's how God set the world up. Animals do not change uh. into all caps different kinds of animals. So, I just want to take a second and say, no shit. <laughs> Nobody said that. <laughs> nobody said that cats are turning into dogs, and nobody said that it's happening in literally. Three generations. The, oh God! Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's 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 right. it's, uh, it's. I'm gonna refrain from explaining a thing that I will assume most people are aware of. But like, uh, if, you uh, you'd well. be wrong though. 
like i mean probably people listening to this podcast are aware of it but like like, and if they're not they're welcome we still welcome you yes we welcome you to the fold we we can (laughs) there it just just message us and we'll send you some resources because the the key here is uh yes people only have very small differences between generations right animals only have small variations the thing is it happens over extended periods of time in multiple generations that's why we saw the there there was an evolutionary change in like moths when the industrial revolution happened they started off as white and then because there was so much smog and the white ones got hunted to death right yeah the the dark the dark tone moths were more common as a result and as a result the species now has a, a dark wing pattern so like well, it can it, also it, it, happen in a very accelerated. Um, I'm oh shit. I'm I, I, I'm drawing a blank. This was either in bacterium or in seeds, but there's ways in which you can observe evolution at a rather rapid scale. I mean, um, the flu, the flu virus. Oh yeah, that, that's like, true. Like the flu virus is the COVID nineteen. These are all things that evolve constantly, right? The reason you need different vaccines is because of evolution. Yeah, it's, that's that's it, the reason. It's it's. Yeah, now I want to go back and. Uh, I'm gonna go down a rabbit hole on my own later tonight when the baby goes to bed, just watching like biology videos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I it's. <laughs> I, I I do I do love when uh, the go to is like. It, I love I love straw man arguments that are just so patently missing the point in like. Literally, no one has ever said that ever. It's yeah. Well, it, the 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 issue is that I there's or it would it, it seems like the arguments or defenses that they are making to counter a point that only they are arguing. Other people are saying mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right. So it, yeah, it, it, it's uh-huh. it's I I hate using the word bubble, but it, it seems like there's it's p- people distill other reasonable arguments down to a point and then only argue that distilled point back to themselves and then they start arguing against that point where you're just kind of like you're you're just kind of in your own little spot arguing with yourself about things that nobody said yeah i mean the other thing too is like so we could talk about this for hours right um but it, it, it at its core is a straw man argument, right? Like, yeah. like you set something up that's easy to bring down because you're not accepting nuance and all that stuff. Um, but also consider the fact that like, so so what's happening here, particularly in the case of Jurassic Park, is people have a belief system, right? Um, and they have identified something that doesn't make sense, right? Um, yeah, but they haven't admitted to themselves that that thing doesn't make sense, right? Um, so what ends up happening is you start defending that thing, right? Because there's yeah, because there's evidence to the contrary that this thing is indefensible, right? Or that it's it's falsifiable in some way or like unlikely. Mm-hmm. But you also recognize that if this thing's wrong then that means that there's a problem in the chain of things. Yeah, right? I, w- and, I was going to say that it, they, they've, when you identify with an I- ideology to a certain extent, mm-hmm. if you start scratching away at anything, it's just like you're talking about that chain. It's kind of like that, that sweater from Weezer's song where you can't allow any of those threads to be pulled because as soon as it mm-hmm. starts coming undone, you're going to start seeing more and more come undone. Well, that's that's also fundamentally where the difference lies between faith and science right um because central to science is the acceptance that sometimes a theory is no longer relevant or correct or a very yeah. good explanation for what's going on so, that doesn't mean all theories are suddenly invalid that yeah. just means this particular way of looking at the problem is invalid but yeah. realizing that something isn't doesn't support the system how it previously was was understood doesn't unravel the sweater it just kind of like changes the pattern of it and you go hey i've still got this bomb ass sweater yeah uh, but if you think that the sweater is perfect in every single way then unraveling it in any way ruins it yeah it's no longer perfect anywho brandon 
we do a podcast about cryptids, and I we just do. talked about Young Earth creationism for a bit. <laughs> Uh, yes, it, it, it's still canon to the podcast. We do a lot of uh, oh, it's it's a hundred percent canon. Why you see stuff? Let's, but yeah, yeah let's, let's let's dive into it. So, welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we'll take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world. <coughs> oh, excuse me, that was a cough because I have a cold because I have a baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that lives under your bed. Mm-hmm. I'm Brandon. It does. I'm John. And uh, today, by vote from the Jackalopes in the uh, Discord server, uh, uh, we're talking about the Oklahoma octopus. And by law, I have to reference Squidbillies. There's another Squidbilly. We, that's maybe the fifth time we brought up Squidbillies? Oh, no. Every time that there's an octopus monster that exists in the United States, I talk about Squidbillies. Um I'm s- I'm still very upset about the fact that Unknown Hinson was a, a racist asshole. Um, it wasn't just the character he played on TV. It uh, it happens. It's it happened. The, the frequency is ha- increasing. It's 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 surprisingly a. <laughs> there's a surprisingly uh, narrow uh, sliver of that Venn diagram that doesn't overlap. Yeah. Um, oh, and first. Uh, I'd like to start out by saying uh, later in this episode, I'll be talking about recent mass drowning deaths uh, from reports as written by the CDC and the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, because I'm just reading statistics from reports, it may come off uh, rather cold or just not be a thing you want to hear. So just putting that out there if you don't want to well, hear I that mean, when we get to that. You know, you'll, 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 you'll know when, it, when it's going to happen. One death is a tragedy. Uh, a thousand deaths is a statistic, right? Like, like. That's the thing, because yeah. our our brains, and this is another thing. Our brains well, is our our brains is our brains are like optimized for dealing with small groups, right? Yeah. Um, we we have like a there is there is like a finite number of people that we can accept as being like actual people, right? Yeah. Um, by default, like we have to physically, we have to really cognitively change our view of the world to view other people as people. Um, well, even beyond well, that, if you're just talking yeah. about like numbers, if you're mm-hmm. like, even if it's not people, but apples, if you've got, um, a dollar or like four apples or 10, like, you know what that is. And unless yeah. you frequently deal with vast numbers, if someone says something's like $4.8 million, your brain just goes, that's a big number. You don't really have a way because mm-hmm. you you don't deal with those numbers. So it kind of removes that person, uh, personal uh, yeah. touch to it. That I mean, being 4. said, 4.8 million is about the same as 1 million to me. So Yeah, yeah. They're, they're functionally the same number. That, uh, that being said, in, in that part I did go through, because that is like, I don't want to avoid just like lumping. I do go over like individuals with their names and all their, you know, it, we'll, we'll, everyone will we'll see we'll when get we get there. there. We'll get there. And uh, <clears throat> um, second uh, is there are no major or local newspapers writing about the Oklahoma octopus. So rather than my usual format of like, opening with or sprinkling in stories from like news stations or preferably scanned copies of newsprint. Um, Mm -hmm. And we'll be pretty quickly just diving into like um, not necessarily picking apart, but examining the details of what it could be. Why is it being talked about? Uh, Is the time period significant to the origins of the creature? And is it like biologically plausible to exist? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, so basically what we're talking about is, so this is recent. This is this is rather recent, and this is, um, uh, basically just a straight up octopus. Okay, I mean, there's worse. Like, like, so I I haven't heard anything, right? Uh-huh. A straight up octopus is less weird than ninety percent of the stuff we talk about on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like. I, I, maybe are there freshwater walk octopus even? Because uh, like no. obviously Oklahoma. Okay, there's not. Okay, Oklahoma's not gonna have a saltwater, a saltwater anything. No. Well, no. actually, that's not tr- that's not entirely true because the Red Sea does exist and that's landlocked. Yeah. Or the um, Dead Sea is what I meant. Yeah, to say. Yeah, I don't know that there are any salt flats uh, or or like high like like uh, um oh shit what's salt Halo. Halo, what? hail, 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 hailite. Sorry, is is the rock hailite. formation containing um salt? Um, yeah. 
So the, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to open with just like the blur from the cryptids wiki just to okay. dive into it um, before we get deeper. So the Oklahoma octopus is generally uh, said to inhabit some freshwater man-made lakes of Oklahoma, including Lake Thunderbird, 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 Ulaga Lake, and Lake Tenkiller, uh, where it attacks and kills unsuspecting swimmers, and there is no footage of it. So Tenkiller, I'm assuming. Oh my god, that's a okay. Ten killer is two letters away from tentakiller. Oh. And at that point, at that point, it's like you're you're asking for it swimming in a lake named Tentakiller. Because like, that's a much cooler name for the octopus, too. The Tentakiller? Yeah, it's also uh it's also the name of one of the the sea co- the uh sea cons, piranicons, depends on if you're yeah. in America or the I just like I would swim in a lake if I knew there was an octopus in it. I would not swim in a lake if there was a tentakiller in it. So really, that's maybe that's on us. We have to start giving animals ratter names. I mean, if an animal's dangerous, I think that it needs to have a dangerous name, right? Yeah. Like, like let's be let's be honest. Like honestly, bear, right? For what a bear can do, bear yeah. is a terrible name for what a bear is. Bears, it's too cuddly. Bears very cuddly, and they're kind of cuddly when you see them at a distance. But if you call mm-hmm. them like the deflesher. I would avoid mm-hmm. a D-fly. I wouldn't go on walks. I go on walks at work sometimes. There's mm-hmm. bears. I wouldn't go for walks if there were if the the woods were filled with D-fleshers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, they they should be called D-fleshers or or uh, flesh violators or or something 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 that gets into the core of how like, bears actually can be. There's a uh, so we do have where I work is is um it's it's. Hidden's the wrong word. It's in the woods. It's off a road. It's in the woods. Um, I, I, given the fact that where it is is, it's also on a mountain. Of, it's on a mountain. It's in a place that's considered very hippy dippy, and it's a defense contractor. I would yeah. say hidden is the correct word for for where you. Work. Well, it's 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 in, it's 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 intentional. But, um, yes, yes, no, that is, that hidden is the correct word. <laughs> and, uh, so, like, people go on walks, because there's a lot of trails in, in that. Yeah, yeah. And, um, it's not uncommon. I see, like, bears uh, every year, probably, like, how, maybe 15, 20 times just walking around the campus. And, um, it's gotten to the point where, uh, because, like, there are bears, and then, like, sometimes you just can't get back to the campus, because, because there's the bears. because the all the trails have like it's usually one mother and two to three baby bears and you're like well I guess I'm just on this side now um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just live here now there's bear signs but we actually had like a formal bear training course <laughs> 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 which uh, it, it was all like stuff like you're like oh yeah of course but it, I just thought it was very funny that the, the the growing population of bears has gotten to a point where like it had to be addressed in a formal manner. And there's like maybe s- just dial it back on the bears a bit. Signs <laughs> everywhere and all the TVs all over the walls have like slides that show like bear safety. <laughs> I mean not right now. Yeah, no, there's still bears. Wouldn't it be wouldn't they be hibernating right about now? It's warm. I haven't, should be, right? I haven't seen Although a bear then in a again, while. Yeah. Yeah, I, who knows? Climate change probably fucked everything. I've up. seen a bear or a peacock. Also, didn't realize uh, Last of Us climate change. I didn't realize that was like a plot point. Oh yeah, at least well, from the TV show. I mean, it's it's cordyceps fungus, right? Yeah, like so it's it, 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 it's it's stuff. You know, I haven't watched yeah. the TV show yet. Um, it's funny good. story. Yeah. Funny funny story about The Last of Us. So that came out in either 2012 or 2013. Uh I want to say 2013. About. 2013. Yeah. The first one came out in 2013. Um and that was also the same year that BioShock Infinity Infinity came out. BioShock Infinite came out. I did play that. Uh, that year, I remember being like, "Oh man, BioShock Infinite's my game of the year." Um then I played Last of Us and I was like, Fuck. <laughs> I learned from the TV show because I never played the game. I thought Ellie was his daughter this whole time. Eh, no, but kind of. Like it's well, kind of, but she's he, like she's adopted a, daughter she, almost. Hard no his, on the, on the daughter because spoiler yes. alert, she gets shot so dead 
in the first mm-hmm. episode. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, no, Ellie's, Ellie's like his daughter surrogate. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. she grows on him. Um, yeah. According to rumor, uh, this freshwater cephalopod is about the size of a horse, resembles an what? octopus with long tentacles and leathery uh, reddish-brown skin. Okay, so... There's big octopus, possums, poos, octopod eyes. Yes, but they're usually not... In freshwater usually, lakes? Usually they're not on, in freshwater wet lakes, and they're usually not within... Any form of like surface level that we can reach by diving, yeah. Like it's it's kind of infamous how like large cephalopods tend to not survive making it to the surface because of like well, most things don't because the delta and pressure makes you yeah. the blobfish doesn't look like a blob in when it's not on the surface. No, it doesn't. It that's yeah. that's that's just a uh, terribly mistreated fish. <laughs> yeah. Um. And uh, there we have it. But there's a a bit more to go. The first thing that makes this story stand out is that all the lakes are freshwater. And this Mm -hmm. makes the Oklahoma octopus, uh, as there are no cephalopods, can survive freshwater, with the exception of the odd squid. Um, This is because the blood of an octopus does not carry enough oxygen to transfer uh, blood to each muscle, uh, which is why they evolved to have three hearts. Mm -hmm. Um, Evolution comes up again. Yeah, yeah, it, it, again. Um, mm-hmm. How long could an octopus survive in an environment uh, not suited for it? Um, it looks like 30 plus minutes uh, when its heart is too starved of oxygen and its uh, brain suffocates to death. See, um, you put a plus on there, but you didn't put an upper limit, Brandon. So, technically, that, that, lawyered. that, yes. <laughs> technically, these octopi could exist. Technically, they can live indefinitely. Uh, yes. By however, you said plus. what article I found that said that. Yes. Um, making my initial thought that uh, perhaps they can not survive, but spend a decent amount of time in freshwater, uh, the way some sharks can. Although these sharks also travel up rivers of mixed water. Um, this thirty-minute window does explain uh, why we can see an octopus leave a pool of water and walk to another one. Because I'm sure everyone's seen <laughs> at least a video of them like doing their cool walk across across the beach. Um, see, see, um, sharks though. Like, okay, so so octopus, they're they're uh-huh. intelligently driven, right? They yeah. they have they have a purpose for going A to B. Sharks, yeah. pure hatred. Sharks are pure hatred, as we that is, saw from uh, um, the Black Demon on the Baja Beast episode, mm-hmm. whichever number that was. Yeah, um, yeah, no, that that's that's what keeps them going up stream they can't survive in freshwater they're just so filled with rage and hatred that they survive yes um uh, uh oh additionally there is no video or photographic evidence of this creature so <laughs> of like of course there's not of, of course a <laughs> fucking of course of course there's not of, of course there's not despite the fact that like it's at a freshwater lake which means that people have decided to go there to take part in something right yeah. a man-made freshwater lake probably means that the per- the people went there for some form of recreation therefore that means that they probably have some form of camera but for whatever oh, reason this is very modern Th- this is yes. everyone has smartphones in the in this this it, time period exactly so it's it's kind of conspicuous that there's no footage of this yeah. creature <laughs> a little bit it's a, it's it's suspect it's definitely suspect the, um, if if this was among us i'd definitely be slapping that button uh, so, why are there stories of a freshwater octopus in Oklahoma? Well, the first thread is the frequency of which uh, people are drowning in these lakes. Um, these are so common that I had an unexpected Google autocomplete when I typed in Oklahoma drowning. And that was Oklahoma drowning death chart. Um, and also, heads up, this is when we're going to start talking about statistics for, uh, you know, if that's not your thing. But it, it's it's such an anomaly um, that it auto-completes for searches for, for those statistics, um, which what is something I haven't seen before. Um, I found uh, the CDC also tracks drowning data, and landlocked Oklahoma has the 10th highest drowning rate of all 50 states at 1.77 per 100,000, just behind Alaska, Hawaii, Florida. Um, so be, being landlocked, it's not far behind the coastal places where you expect to see this 
Okay, so I'm going to say this, right? Uh-huh. Um, that's not entirely surprising to me. No. Nope. Right? Um, because, because, okay, yeah, so, so Florida has more people swimming, yeah. right? But also in Florida, more people know how to swim. Oh, true, true. Right? But in Oklahoma, like, you don't necessarily need to know how to swim, like, in your day-to-day life, right? Like, for it's- us... Us, like, in New York State, right, that's not always the case, but we also live by the Hudson, right? Yeah. So, like, I feel like there's a pretty high level of people around here knowing how to swim, like, just in case. A lot right? of people know how to swim. There's pools, public pools. Yes. And there's, I've but gone, like, I've been spent a lot of time in uh, creeks and mm-hmm. in ponds where when I got back to my friend, this is when I was younger, we went out and there was a pond. And when we got to the parent back to his parents' house, um, they they're like, "You did what?" And then inspected us for hookworms. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the the real threat in this area actually is just like hidden whirlpools. Yeah. Um, that's the real one. That that kills. Yeah. Uh, but but what I'm saying is, um, I don't assume that like in a place like Oklahoma, people are swimming terribly often or being exposed to like or a similar frequency water, of like right coastal yeah. cities. Gotcha. That makes yeah. sense. So like like and like if you also look at this chart, right? Um, a lot of Mississippi state. There's a lot. There's a bunch of Mississippi states on there too, right? Yeah. Um, and like like it, it's it's just like. The level, like, like, look, the the Great Lakes on here, um, they're pretty low in terms yep. of like death rates. But like, once again, that kind of gets to my point where it's like there is some degree of knowledge that people have as a result of that because there is a danger of water caused by water, right? Yep. And then like you have Florida having a high number because Florida also is a huge tourist destination, right? So you also have people who aren't necessarily from the area who oh, yeah. are are doing like so there's a lot of there's a or lot even, of fa- factors at play even people who can swim um especially in those tourist locations may not be used to swimming in like tides and in oceans exactly. and 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 oh, yeah, those, well, it's a completely different set of 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 uh characteristics mm-hmm. of, of of the water that you, you wouldn't necessarily be used to okay but like right. oklahoma well, it's like a man-made like they have man-made lakes how many yeah. non-man-made like actually i don't know that i'm not gonna say but like how many non-man-made lakes are there in oklahoma how much how frequent are rivers and streams and creeks and like yeah how frequently are people participating in that because like when, when i think of oklahoma i think of like farmland right yeah like cow farms that's the first thing that pops into my head um so from my perspective i think that that's probably at least in part at play here yeah true 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 um oh i also used 12 foot ladder to get some data from the army corps of engineers who did a study on the drownings Um, what is 12 foot ladder i've never heard of this so you know um paywalls yeah oh okay 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 yeah yeah the, the, no, the, never mind. I've heard of it. I've heard of twelve foot ladder. <laughs> yep, yep. I use it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I babies. am an academic. Yeah, I use I've it heard a of lot this now to that I think access about it. Um, articles and in in studies and because don't just don't put academic stuff behind paywalls. I mean, that's just me so, talking. I have something to say about that. Yeah. The only thing I can say about that is okay. So I recently am pub- I I have two papers coming out yes. like soon. Um I had to set up the rights stuff for that. Uh-huh. It costs like two thousand dollars or something crazy like that for me to open the rights to my paper yeah. legally. Um because the Damn. the the publisher owns the rights effectively unless I pay to have the right o- the ownership of my rights. So it's not so much on the the people who are writing it. It's more on who, wherever they're publishing and publishers gotcha. getting their cut. Yeah. Yeah. Even though, like, functionally now, like, even though, so, okay. I have a lot to say <laughs> about the academic paper, like, thing. Um, it's, like, mostly, it's mostly free labor that runs a lot of these companies. Like, the entire review process is free. Mm-hmm. Like, like, the most crucial and critical element that makes like science work yeah. is free labor. 
So, um, the fact that, that, like, places are charging crazy amounts of money is just so egregious as a result. Because, like, people are going out of their way, spending time that they don't have to review other people's papers yeah. and do the scientific method. But regardless, let's get back to the let's get back to the, okay. the podcast because I could talk about that for a while and just be angry about it because yeah. as an academic, it is my it is my my right to be mad about how academia works. Yeah. Completely. But I'm not going to do anything about it. Uh so in um 2020 alone, the drowning death rate tripled compared to 2019. Um and here's what the study from the Army Corps of Engineers said. Uh, the Corps manages 28 lakes in Oklahoma, including the lakes that we're discussing in particular. Um, the last time drownings happened at a more rapid rate was in 2001, when 17 people drowned over the same time span, uh, documents indicate. Um, the previous year, the number was 19. Uh High pools have contributed to the exorbitant uh, number of pa the deaths in the past two years. 14 were recorded uh, through Monday of the fiscal year of uh, 2007. Um, Grove said, and he, he's one of the people um, from this report, uh, the alcohol remains a factor in more than half of all the drownings that the Corps has uh, reported. And, so uh, that's the least surprising thing you've said to me <laughs> that you know i wasn't expecting what i was going to see when i started reading into this and then as soon as they said that i was like oh that's a factor i um had not considered and as soon as it got brought up especially uh, like in that geographically in that region uh, brandon i hadn't even, like i just talked about like why i think it makes sense in that region entirely and i never even once talked about alcohol yeah, yeah, I, I, it's, so. and it's a, it's a, a fairly large factor. Um, Adkins said that probably more than half of the people who drowned had no intention of getting into the water, um, which kind of goes back to your, your previous point about um, yeah. people's you know relative ability to swim based on where they're from. Um, and many lake goers also run into trouble when they misjudge their fitness. And again, I think that could be related to alcohol to a certain extent um, oh, as well. Oh, 100%, 100%. Like, it's liquid courage, right? Oh, yeah. Like. Especially if you get, like, some bros out there and a, and a couple, uh, you know, PBRs floating yeah. around. And there's going to be there's gonna be a contest. Also, the spike was in 2020, right? Yeah. Uh, which. I don't know about you, but, like, I feel like 2020 resulted in a lot of reckless shit happening. That's after that's about fair. six months. Yeah. After about six months of being in, in isolation, shit got weird. Yeah, rapidly. It it definitely did. Um, oh, he says they failed to realize that they don't have the stamina and strength they had uh, back when they were in their late teens or early twenties. He said nine of the thirteen people who have drowned since May were uh, sorry May twenty fifth were thirty eight or younger. Data shows. Um, heat can also creep up on people as well, Adkins said. Um, highs in the Tulsa area are expected to be in the hundreds through Tuesday, according to the National Weather Service. So you're mixing alcohol with high heat and um, mm -hmm. misjudging physical ability. Yeah, it's 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 kind of a nexus point of like a bunch of like... It, it, it's, it's a bunch of factors that absolutely play together. Yeah. Yeah. To create, like, a perfect storm of not great shit. Yeah. Um, the sunlight and the heat really take a toll, Adkins says. And when you are drinking on top of that, then your facil faculties go down uh, the tubes in a hurry. You're not going to be able to respond as if you would if you were sober. Some of the other deaths tied to specific ind individuals include health conditions. Brandon Phillips Reed, 28, of Broken Arrow, fell into the water on July 21st while having a seizure, according to the Oklahoma uh, Highway Patrol. And That's that's tragic. It is tragic. It, it is tragic, and this is the part where I kind of said, like, I'm going to try to tie people, like, specific yeah, individuals into it to pull it away from a statistics game. That's, that's tragic. Yeah. And um, poor judgment. On July 26th, my, uh, John Michael Clinton II, 32, of Broken Arrow, Jumped into the lake from a 60-foot bluff, uh, the OHP said. Um, it, <clears throat> it's reasonable to assume that the friends and relatives of these victims would seek out um, Oh, that cause. was like five days difference. Yeah, yeah. 
and they're they're Jesus. they're you know somewhat similar age from the same town. They um, probably knew each other. Like it's 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 plausible, realistically speaking. And given that um, there there was such a great spike, um, it's reasonable to assume that the friends and relatives of these victims, or maybe victims, the wrong word of the if these people, would seek out a cause for the drowning of someone who was. Um, like relatively young and in in otherwise good health, you know I mean, it's it's not unreasonable to to think someone would would try to seek other explanations. We talk about this on the podcast a lot, right? Like sometimes it's easier to believe that there was something going on than just like the universe is a cruel, uncaring place that yeah. doesn't it doesn't give a shit about anything, right? Cruel mm-hmm. isn't even the correct word. It just doesn't care. Yeah. Right. Like that's that's the thing. Like uh, once you come to that realization, there's there's one of two ways you can react to that, and that is, okay, whatever. I'm just gonna live my life, mm-hmm. or I need to find more meaning to something. Yeah. And th- those 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 are the two like key ways that people look at the world is either a attempting to fill meaning where there is none because mm-hmm. the lack of meaning is crippling or be accepting the lack of meaning yeah that's pretty much it uh articles that kept coming up in this time um including one from the associated press related to a 2003 case of a fisherman in uh faulkner lake county uh arkansas who caught an octopus in a freshwater lake uh from the apy december 3rd 20 2003 um, Mayflower, Arkansas, the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission said today that there was a fisherman who caught an octopus in Lake Conway near Mayflower earlier this week. Fisherman John Masaryk of Glen Island, Illinois, caught a real live good sized octopus on Monday at the Lake Stam. Uh, the commission said that it can't explain how the octopus got into the lake, but a common guess is that someone had it in an aquarium. It grew too large and they dumped it in the lake. Uh, it was alive when Masaryk caught it. And there he is smiling with the little octopus by his, his uh, truck. Uh, one thing I found, while not a direct claim to be the Oklahoma octopus. Oh, I feel bad for that octopus. Is that cephalopods. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, it's it was found in water, but it was still actively starving of oxygen until it reached brain death. Yeah. No, I know. That's why I feel bad. But he looks kind of jazzed. Look at him. Yeah. I I Monster. They're intelligent. Yeah. They're, yeah, yeah. Don't octopi. Him. Octopus. Well, an octopus has sentience. If I'm if I'm not mistaken correctly, I think an octopus can actually recognize its own reflection. There's a reason why I have not watched my octopus teacher yet, and it's because I don't want to feel sad when I eat certain foods. Um, I know, uh, that's why I don't eat octopus. So one thing uh, that I found, while well, not a direct claim to have been the Oklahoma octopus is that cephalopods are from space. In a paper published by 30 ah, scientists yes. in 2018, I'll do a, uh, a super short series of excer- excerpts, and uh, I'll try to link the full paper in the Discord for everyone. Um, it opens after the abstract in section is, one. Is this some... Is this, some uh, this is panspermia, right? That's what we're dealing with here? Um, I would need a refresh on panspermia. Basically, panspermia is like the universe was seeded by other like places in the galaxy in the universe. Um, like, well, like our our Earth. It. Yeah, you you'll let you let me know um, if okay. this falls under that blanket. Um, in purpose of article, it says this review article is intended to represent, in the main, the collective knowledge and wisdom of over thirty scientists and scholars across many disciplines of the physical and biological sciences. We review much of the key experimental and observational data gathered over the past 60 years, which is consistent or predicted by the Hoyle-Wicker smegmanth, which I know I'm saying wrong, or the HW thesis of cometary cometary cosmic biology. Okay, yeah, so so it is is panspermia. It is? is? This is panspermia, yeah. Okay, it says, We are acutely aware that the mainstream thinking in the origin and further evolution of life on Earth is anchored firmly in the terrestrial paradigm. Um, they're positing in short that life, uh, on earth came from space, uh, and, and then we take a jump to the top of section three, which is their cosmic theory of life. 
In the mid-1970s, the idea of prebiotic molecules existing in interstellar space or in comets was initially not part of the mainstream scientific opinion. Uh, the original proposal by one of us and CW uh, for organic polymers in interstellar, interstellar space in 1974 was followed by a long series of articles in collaboration with Fred Hoyle in confronting head-on the reigning scientific paradigm of an origin of life on Earth. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to say that there's a life on Earth originated from uh, comets rather than the, the current paradigm. And from yeah, here Yeah, I mean, that that's yeah. that's not an uncommon... Like, panspermia is a thought, right? So, like, yeah. like basically, basically the, the thought is rather than rather than it occurring on Earth, the, like, promote, primordial, primordial ooze or whatever the hell you want to call it, right? The, the, like, bubbling pit where the first biotic in beings came into existence. Uh -huh. um, that, that, like, that happened on another planet is the, the high, core hypothesis there, yeah. right? As opposed to happening on Earth, which, you know, is not completely unlikely, Right, it's not impossible. No, it's not. It's it's not impossible. I find it less. Yeah. Again, I know nothing about like microbiology or space travel, but I have like a. I'll say uh, not a firm understanding, but slightly more of an understanding of like the forces and in, in in things involved when you're um, going in from low Earth orbit to to going in in and out of the atmosphere. I just find it very. It's I find oh, it I'm... hard to believe that like things, things could survive. Like I think like something might be able to survive that, but you would need like a high. I think it's a numbers game if you look at it at that point, where you'd need like a large number of things passing through the atmosphere in order to get the like statistical numbers of a thing being able to survive. So I do want to say he might this dude might not be the most trustworthy and okay. that's mainly because he talks about Lamarckian evolution oh okay we're so, gonna put a pin in that because it sounds like that's a thing you know about and I don't and that seems interesting okay okay yeah B basically basically it's way too complicated for me to talk about on this podcast. Episode. Okay. Because I Can also haven't done recent research into it, but it, as far as my memory is correct, it's not the most so on, accepted paradigm of On evolution. behalf of probably everyone in the Discord server, could I put in a, 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 a ticket? Can I put in a request for you to cover Lamarckian evolution on an episode to... to <sighs> Even if it's not the full, like, even, it, like, just, like, something addressing it. Like, find something me, close enough brushing elbows with it where you could talk about it. Let me make a note. I'll make a note. I'll look into okay. it. But okay. I, I think I... See, here's the thing. I don't want to say one way or the other on Lamarckian evolution because it's been a fucking yeah. minute. You need a I little refresher. Yeah. Um, but if my memory is correct, uh, one of the, like... Common examples is like a crab using its one claw more, so its claw gets bigger, and then it transfers that to its child, which is not. Uh. Yeah, like like, I don't think that there's like a ton of support for Lamarckian evolution. That doesn't seem like that's. It. I don't see that. I can't. I can't see that. But but but, because that's I like mean, if if I work out, if I just lift weights with my left arm and then I have a baby, my baby's gonna have a bigger left arm. Is that kind of like the oversimplification? That's the oversimplification of Lamarckian ev evolution, as I as I remember. Okay. It. So uh, my I I also haven't read this dude's paper, right? Yeah, I was I'll, just I'll make reading this full through, paper available. I was just reading through his shit, and I noticed I noticed Lamarckian evolution in it. That's all. Okay. Um, from here, I'll jump to section thirteen, where uh, the keyword cephalopod spikes. Because <clears throat> I, I really didn't have interest in reading this full article, I really wanted to see <clears throat> how it relative to sp specifically cephalopods. Um, a summary: 
is uh, <clears throat> they do not believe the timeline of the origin of cephalopods and their complexity might s make sense given their origins, uh, supposed proximity to humans. <clears throat> Excuse me. They um, then uh, have some pictures and go into space viruses leading to this. Um, the evolution from squid to octopus is compatible with a suite of genes inserted by extraterrestrial viruses. An alternative extraterrestrial scenario discussed is that a population of cryopreserved octopuses, uh, sorry, octopus embryos soft landed in mass from space 275 million years ago. And, um, that's their typo over here. Not my typo. Um, so yeah, they're positing that a comet is filled okay. with uh, squid uh, embryos landed in here. So okay, okay. My I, I did a really really quick look up. Okay, Lamarckian, if my memory is correct, is laughable, right? Oh, uh, okay, nice. Because because the idea is it's acquired. It, you acquire traits and yeah. then you pass them to your offspring, which is clearly not how things work yeah um there is there is some like epigenetic factors that can happen where like your your genes change during your lifespan right because of yeah. like various mutations and exposures and things along those lines but that's mm -hmm. not like that's not the hypothesis posited by lamarck um okay yes yes Oh, um, in short, uh, they are positing that either squids were infected by a space virus and became octopodi, or they landed from space on a comet 275 million years ago. Um, so that's just wild. Um, there are some things online about it, uh, being a creature from first people storytelling, um, and the more credible places, of course, there is. Uh, course. I found there's always, there's always. It's always, uh, it's always a thing, and I, I try to be more aware of that when I, as I as I read into things. Um, uh, the more credible places I found stated this, and then said that there's no uh, recorded credible sources for it. They'll so th so they will say, here's a thing people are saying about it, and they'll say we can't support this. Um, however. One anonymous comment I found at the bottom of one of these sites did read, and this was posted by an anonymous user on May 28th, 2015, um, saying that, right at the end of their lunch break, by the way, saying, Hi, I can shed some light on the origin of this folklore. To my knowledge, um, it originates from the science fiction writer Russell Bates, who had a letter published in Fate magazine in the 1980s. Of course. Uh, Bates is a member of the Kiowan Nation, and the letter uh, written to a correspondent who had it published was a rundown of local monster lore he'd heard from fellow Native Americans. He said the uh, the tentacled creatures were described in Caddo Indian tradition. Um, he also identified Sailor Lake as one of the locales uh, associated with the legend and commented that a uh, resort on the lake had shut down after a high number of unexplained drownings. Um, and this user said he actually visit visited this lake for a follow-up on the claim and the resort owner was amused by his suggestion and denied knowing of any mysterious drownings in the uh, uh, decade since. So that's a, that's a that's that's a little bit more than a. Uh, um, there, that just gives them some additional context. Um, so it's Russell Bates, who was a, a First Nations um, author, said, mm -hmm. and I couldn't find it. I really wanted to find that letter. But um, someone's summary of it said that you, you know there the, there's potential, but again, there's no no nothing's published, and I can't find any proof of it outside of this one guy's random comment. Um, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, um, lastly, oh yeah, I, I do want to I do want to take a second to step back too about the panspermia thing. Yeah, um, I don't think that panspermia is how it happened. Just to be clear, panspermia is a more complicated way of saying like it's more complicated than if life just emerged on earth. Yeah. That's that's all there is to it, right? Okay. Like like that that's it. Like it's if anything it's less likely, it's just like whatever. <laughs> but but the whole like survival on the trip thing is is you know, Yeah. 
that that's the other thing too. There's uh, a there are a lot of factors involved in panspermia <laughs> that make it unlikely. Can you just do an episode on the different versions of like evolution and like origin of life? Uh, that I think that's above my pay grade, Brandon. <laughs> That's we're not getting paid. Um, yeah, everything technically is above my pay grade. <laughs> uh, lastly, I found a YouTube channel uh, of Professor Caleb Black, a PhD in clinical psychology, uh, who has a science versus pseudoscience video on it, where he interviews Dr. Eliz- Elizabeth Baraji, a PhD of Oklahoma Biological Survey, and asks some questions um, that I, I wouldn't have had thought to consider. So this is just going to go over the viability of an octopus living in Oklahoma. Um, so he asks, could an octopus adapt to live in salt water? And she says, no, um, it would need to be able to cycle large amounts of water and pick out the salt and excrete it. Octopuses do not have bivalves or other physiology uh, needed to do that. He said, what would happen if an octopus had laid eggs in fresh water? So could one have just given birth in a lake? And she said, well, they would swell unless they're somehow encased. And if the eggs were to hatch, um, would the juveniles have anything to eat? Would would an octopus in a freshwater lake be able to even survive, given the the what it has in the area? And the juveniles become planktonic and feed on baby starfish and baby crustaceans, also floating around uh, in the plankton. There are very few freshwater invertebrates that have planktochorology. Um, she sounded muffled. This is, I'm writing up it from a, a video interview. Um, they just don't have that system in fresh water. Um, so what problems do you see with the Oklahoma, Oklahoma octopus? He asks, and she said, Oklahoma isn't on the coast. And in order for the octopus to get there, it would have had to move up the Mississippi, up the Arkansas river. And in over time doing that, it would leave populations all along, um, which aren't present. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <clears throat> That, that's kind of picking that out. The other thing is temperature. The temperature in freshwater fluctuates all along the temperature, uh, while all along the temperature of the oceans is more stable. Even creatures like freshwater sponges don't survive the winter. Um, mm-hmm. Are octopuses dangerous? Uh, and she says, <laughs> when you eat live oct- octopus, you can sometimes choke to death. Hey, I saw the documentary Godzilla vs. Kong, King Kong. Yeah. I have it right here. Wait, uh, somewhere. One second. Here we go. King Kong vs. Godzilla. Right here. Yeah. I got the documentary. I know. I've seen the tapes. Yeah. I've seen the tapes. Giant octopus are dangerous. They nearly killed that woman in the hut. There's, you know what? I can't argue that point. I will also say... That woman in the hut was definitely wearing a form of blackface. That's oh okay. There's a lot of yeah. I still can't get over that mystery science th- theater three thousand. The red face. Yeah, the red face. That was a choice. The red face. It was a choice. At- it was also a choice by the makeup department to not do the ears. Yeah, which I mean, like. I mean, if you're going to go for it, at least, like, commit. Yeah, like, commit. It's kind of almost worse. That It's definitely worse. Like, it's bad regardless. It it definitely makes it worse. It's bad, but to, like... The, the, so, so there's, like, a clear lack of, un, like, caring to do it in the first place. And then to have the other layer of lack of caring below it. It's mm-hmm. just a, a shit tower. It's don't, shit all the way down. Don't build a shit tower. So uh, when did so I I'm I want to say um, when did when did like this story first appear like about the <coughs> Oklahoma this this Lake? was in in the in the late two thousands um, okay. is when this story first appeared and it was around the time of the mass drownings and okay. that there was a news article from. Um, <clears throat> Less than 20 years prior of a man capturing an octopus, I okay, think, okay. made it easy for people to kind of latch on and move into that okay, kind okay. of direction. So this is like this is like a social media-based cryptid then? It, almost entirely, yeah. There's no, okay, okay. R- there's no legacy media addressing it, really. Um, it's all purely from 
people okay. online. Um, connecting dots that don't really need to be connected, but that's just how things go sometimes. I mean, we're humans. Connecting dots that don't need to be connected is, like, what we do. Yeah, it's what we're best at. Um, yeah. Lastly, the oldest lake uh, this 200-year-old creature is supposed to have been from was built in 1947. So, the last man-made lake was in, built in, in almost 1950. If it was going to be from, like, the supposed... Um, lore that they're they're pulling from, it's just not possible. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's unlikely at least. <laughs> yeah, very unlikely. Very um, much so. God, this is this is controversy. Wait, wait, wait! I went to the the wiki because I was curious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I link to the wiki? Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> <sighs> oh god okay so the controversy on the wiki is due to the lakes being man-made the drownings are most likely a result of people getting drunk and not paying attention while swimming also drowned victims have no sucker lacerations on their bodies uh yeah fair fair oh god this is such a this how did you I... make a whole this is such a lean such a lean concept it's lean. So the two things that, because I, I was sitting on it for a while, was um, <clears throat> being able to find information about um, statistics on, on drownings in the time period when this started to come out. And um, also the, uh, the those, that paper, that fucking paper that the scientists put out. I, I need to look <clears throat> more into this, this dude, this... but he seems, he's got some sus. The whole thing's some... suspect. And this would yeah. have been like a, a grab bag, but I was able to, to pull out that uh, okay, that space oh. octopus paper. So, do you have anything else to say? Because I, I um, oh, I don't. No. Okay. Okay. I want to take a second. I have uh the nineteen nineteen uh I think eighty five eighty seven. I have the nineteen eighty seven release of Godzilla King Kong versus Godzilla right here on VHS. Yeah. Um, because of course I do. You're, um, he's holding it in his if people can't see what I see, you're holding it in your hand and waving it around. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's great. It's got like it's got some like old original art of uh Godzilla breathing his fire on King yeah. Kong, and it's like it's kind of I, I don't know, the, the the like the people on the bottom are like weirdly like like it, it, they have like a weird filter on it to make it look like they're they're drawn, but they're not really because it's like just a still frame. And yeah. I should also note that this scene that is on the front cover literally never happens in the course of the movie. Just just to get that out there. Oh, perfect. Um, so this is this is the 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 synopsis on it, and we're done uh -huh. with the episode. By the way, I just wanted to read this because I had it in my hands and I think it's funny. Um, or rather, I think that the way that they sold Godzilla movies back in the eighties was great. The two mightiest creatures of all time come together in a colossal clash, and only one can survive. Freed from an exploding iceberg, Godzilla rages south through Japan, escaping from a science team in the South Seas. King Kong thunders north. Meeting in Nico, the two monsters go, go, to he go head to head. Godzilla stops Kong with his radiation breath, but is wounded and retreats to Mount Fuji to nurse his birds. King Kong is then revitalized by thunderbolts from a passing rainstorm and heads to Tokyo. What? almost raising the city in his search for Godzilla before the military subsides him with narcotic berries. Realizing that humanity's what? only hope is to let the two indestructible monsters fight one another, the military takes Kong to Mount Fuji, where the most spectacular fight ever begins. Brandon, I want to just say that that's, a, that's about 70 minutes of the movie that they describe in that summary. That's fantastic. Like, like that I love summary 80s has... Movies. No, this is seventy. This is sixty three. Was when this oh, shit. came out. Yeah, I just, I just love the summation on the back of this, this thing because it's just so. It, it, it's just the movie's plot entirely. Yeah. The just only the thing whole... it doesn't have here is that, is that Godzilla loses. That, uh, that's pretty. I mean, they gave away the ghost a little bit. Oh, talk about movie plot. So I texted you yesterday about this, but I'm getting all these ads for Cocaine Bear. Mm -hmm. And every time I see these ads for the Cocaine Bear movie, all I think about is Mushu, our bear from the uh, campaign. 
<clears throat> where we just like gave him armor and drugs and set him loose in a house. Yeah, our D20 modern campaign that the DM yeah. just let us go fucking buck wild on. Yeah. Yeah, the the problem they they should have never allowed me to be a smart hero. Um because I really I really fucked with the rules a lot in that. Yeah. Like like I'm the I'm the type of person that you give an inch to and I'll take a mile. So like don't give me inches if you don't want me to like ruin your campaign. There see that's true. You If you give me an inch, <clears throat> I'll work slowly towards that mile trying you, to do it in a methodical way cuz you <clears throat> excuse me. In our um our campaigns like there were things I had ideas and I took time and tried to lay it out and ran stuff past you and you like you'd give an inch I'd try to take a mile but you'd keep you wouldn't you you had your hand on the inch pretty firmly and would let me get like a little bit every once in a while and <laughs> that worked out said. well and was a lot of fun well remember uh so this the episode's completely fucking done because we're talking about D D, which is usually the signal that the episode's over um Remember when I had Gorgo as a character, right? Yeah. The main reason I tied him to your character was so I could I could contain myself from being that dude who just does the fucking buck ass wild shit all yeah. the time. Cause cause that's what happened the second that your character was replaced by a uh, Kenku. Yeah. Is my character fine. just went off the fucking rails. Oh, as soon as Plundar was out of the picture, Gorgo mm-hmm. lost it. He mm-hmm. was gone. Mm-hmm. Oh, Plundar was also getting super, like... Plundar had uh, to be, be retired. Plundar... Plundar got too evil too quick. <laughs> Plundar... See, the thing with my characters is, like, I play... I set up the character initially, and the, from mm-hmm. there, all the decisions are decisions and actions I think the character would make, sprinkled mm-hmm. in with things that I think are funny. Mm-hmm. And Plundar had gotten to a point where it was going to get very dark, very fast, and it there was, was n- no reasonable way for me to pull Plundar back in using actions or decisions for him that he would have made himself. So Plundar well, had to go away. Well, we had he had like a he had like a fuck ton of of children all named Wishbone. He had a series of child. He had a slaves. series of. Child that, slaves named Wishbone. Yeah, yeah, named after the dog Wishbone from the Fantastic Show that I loved uh, as a child. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then and then uh, then I took that the next step further, where I just had a list of plundars, <laughs> where <laughs> it was just layers deep. <laughs> also, it's it's Gorgo the Wise. Let's let's put this out there. You had a barbarian with a crazy like a wisdom. His stat. wisdom. St- his wisdom stat was like eighteen, which is fantastic. Like it was his highest. It was his highest statistic. People have to have fun with their characters. Don't min max. Don't always go by the book. Fuck up your stats a little bit and and, and make that a, a a character point. That's fantastic. He also had a a music box that played the Godzilla uh, march theme when he went into a barbarian rage. <laughs> yes, and my Kenko <laughs> had a soundboard that I used for it to communicate. <laughs> yes you did yes Which, you did I do a lot of things that are fun at first and they get played out very fast <laughs> oh jeez I'm so alright I'm like really I know the episode's done but I yeah. still have all the stuff open about like panspermia and stuff like that and I just yeah. continue to be like I feel like I said something dumb somewhere yeah I mean, Cause, probably. That's what we do. Because, like... <sighs> the current state of cephalopod science and perspectives on the most critical challenges ahead of them from three early career researchers. <laughs> Origin of emergent coronavirus and can- candida, can- candida fungal diseases, terrestrial or... Com- okay. Okay. So the dude who you cu- you quoted, Brandon, yeah. the, his his article, this dude, I don't know if I would take, I take him with a grain of salt. Oh, I wouldn't, 
trust anything from that art. That article was something I found, and I was like, oh, nice. I can make this a single episode instead of a grab bag. What is... Let me see. So, I need to... Okay, chapter six. <clears throat> oh, it's a volume. Who wrote on this? All right, one sec. Sorry, I'm, I'm like... I'm, I need to know what the impact factor of the album that he was in. Like, not album. The uh, journal he was in. Yeah. Because, like, that's important. That's very important to me. Because um, it says a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, progress in biophysics and molecular biology. Let's see. <laughs> oh, actually, you you read that. I'll give you some time to, to scan that. I'll, I'll do the... Uh... Yeah, start doing bits. the. You yeah. do the closing bit. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna keep, um, keep going. So you could find us uh, at our website, what? cryptopediacast.com. Wait, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> What'd you see? Uh, uh, is this is this for real? I think it has a higher impact factor than Kai. I don't know what that means. Oh God! Keep going, keep going. Okay. I'm gonna. You can find okay. us. It's 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 not that. It's lower, but I, what the fuck? On Instagram at CryptopediaCast. You could find us on Twitter at CryptopediaCast. We have a SoundCloud. Uh, you could email us at CryptopediaCast.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. We have a YouTube channel, so you could also find us there. Or if you'd like to read along with the. Uh, uh, transcription provided by YouTube. That's https youtube.com slash at cryptopedia. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So I had to look. So I forgot. Uh-huh. When it comes to academia, different journals have different th- things called impact factors, which like yeah. basically says how important it is and how impactful it is on the field. Um, that being said, Biological journals in uh-huh. high, in like human computer interaction journals have two different layer like scales of impact yeah. factor. So nature is like the gold standard, right? Uh-huh. That has an impact factor of about fifty. Right? Okay. Where the one article was posted had an impact factor of about four. So oh, okay. Just to set the the like frame of reference, yeah, not that reliable in terms of like a high value so what is kai because you, you you seem surprised and then you said the word kai oh kai is uh something human interaction something uh why why can't i remember it's the it's the premier uh conference okay. for for uh uh uh, uh human computer interaction um oh, okay Anyway. Uh, yep. Um, and then uh, also, we're going to give a big old thank you thanks to our patrons uh, who make all of this possible. Uh, in a very literal sense, it keeps the the website up and the things, hostings, and the the spirit boxes spiriting. Um, yeah, I still need to get around to finally making that uh, long form thing about the spirit box. Um, I'll thank them. Okay. So we got Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, Matthew Smith, Will Smith. I I feel like we need to check to make sure that those are two separate people. Um, Lenwood Sharp and Bushcraft Kelso. Uh, you can find us on Discord if you uh, want more more stuff. They've been posting lots of YEC stuff in uh, the Discord, talking about more random topic. If you hang out with some weirdos, they're just like you, or just show up and lurk and just scroll around on your lunch break. Because uh, we do a lot of episode discussions and uh, what have you. Come hang out. It's a cool or disturbing place. Um, it's it's definitely disturbing. Yeah, well, very much so. Uh, mm-hmm. Rate, review, subscribe, send in monsters, request stories, etc. Um, and you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at cryptobrandon. Also, all that was in before um, cryptocurrency was a thing. Uh, so was? don't crypto me its stuff. I, you can send me cryptocurrency. It's just a Ponzi scheme. You can send it to me. I'll I'll use I'll not do anything with it. It'll just sit in my in my wallet. Send me you know Dogecoin. Give, I'll I'll 
Give us your monkeys. Yeah. No, well, I don't want those. Is that still a thing? It still is a thing because people think that NFTs are like actually worth something. Um, Which, oh God. I hate how... I hate how NFTs are absolutely 100, like 100% related to the things I research because I kind of have become a not quite, but kind of social media researcher as a result of just time. So, you know, whatever. Um, this, this episode has been all over the fucking place for me. My brain has been in a weird spot. I woke up with a sinus headache this morning and it can, you can tell, um, (laughs) So our Instagram is mu. My Instagram is mu twenty fifty seven. My ins my my Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames dot com. My email is john at cryptopediacast dot com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco dot com, and his email is <laughs> uh, sorry Tom Mike Hill at gmail dot com. Um, as always, uh, I'm John. I'm Brandon. Um, and before I say things are going to get weird, which I just said, uh, I don't actually think panspermia is that likely, (laughs) (laughs) but things are going to get weird. Uh, So, sorry, I was laughing at the end because there's like, I was farting. There, I did a couple farts in there that, like, I don't. They might not get pulled out by uh, when I when I edit out the room sound. So that there's there's been a few farts that might make their way into the, into the episode. <laughs>